Sisters, God bless you. Such joy to be gathered once again before the presence of our God. Glory to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, with all our happiness, with all our love, let us dedicate this moment to God. Today we are going to honor Him. Today we're going to uh, glorify Him. I invite you to do so because we feel really happy to know that we are in this place, especially we send out a greeting with all due affection to all people who join us at this time, join this live stream, especially those of you who are new to church, who are joining us for the first time. We are the Church of God Ministry of Jesus Christ International. We're Christians. We put the Bible into practice. We have this great blessing of being led also by the Holy Spirit and the manifestation of God through the spiritual gifts, especially through the gift of prophecy, because God speaks to us in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I invite you all to pray with faith, with fervor, and with all our heart. God of heaven, Holy Father, Father of eternal glory, look at our hearts, Lord. They're happy. Look at our souls, O Heavenly Father, telling you, it loves you with all our happiness lord we want to dedicate the service to you each song each re passage we will read each prayer everything is for you god of heaven for you are worthy of being praised you know that this is our joy beloved father to seek you to exalt you to magnify you to glorify you we ask you lord god of glory to support us Support us, God, Heavenly Father. May the power come. May your joy come. Fill us with your happiness. May the power from on high descend, Holy Father, and may your may all your church be blessed. May all your people receive blessings tonight, O God of glory. We thank you, Lord. We thank you with all our heart for this joy and this blessing. And all of this, Heavenly Father, we say to you, and we tell you all of this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the honor and glory be always to the Lord. I invite you, brothers and sisters, that as we are standing, we read a passage in Psalm number 23. This psalm is precious. This psalm, and speaking about the time we're living now, it is a beautiful invitation so that we may always feel encouraged and that we may always remember that we're not alone, brothers and sisters. Loneliness is ha not having, don't have God, and we have God in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Let us read with joy, brothers and sisters. Psalm 23 states in verse number 1, For the glory and honor of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence, it states here, in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. May the honor be always to the Lord. Very joyful, brothers and sisters, for this blessing. I invite you to take your seats. We are going to now sing to the Lord. As this beautiful hymn states, let us sing to the Lord with joy, hymn number 234, titled Sweet Hour of Prayer. Brothers and sisters, we have many blessings that we've received when we pray to God. Because in this place, God indeed hears our prayers, glory to the Lord. 
We have lived this. Let us sing it with authority, with joy. Hymn number 234. Lord of heaven. Thank you, good Father. You are with us, Lord. Your presence, your divine and wonderful presence is in our midst. May the honor and praise be always to the Lord. Now let us also sing hymn number 110, brothers and sisters, who but our God, who is beautiful and powerful to take care of us, to lead us by his hands. Let us sing this hymn titled, His Eye is on the Sparrow. Why should I feel this courage? Why should the shadows come? 
is the name of our God. Hallelujah, glory to the Lord. How many of you give the glory to God, brothers and sisters? What better example to understand this hymn than the testimonies? There's a beautiful testimony of a sister who was experiencing very severe pain in her back, so much so they were that they were unbearable. She was even unable to walk at this point. Even then, she still enjoyed all the live streams. During this time we're living with her family always gathered to listen to the sermons to learn about God and on a Sunday she said with a teaching from our sister Maria Louise our worldwide spiritual leader in the end with her during the prayer she began to feel or she felt fire that well over her body and gave her relief but not only that in addition one of her family members that was there with her as well said that he saw big hands coming out of the TV of their home, touching our sister on her back. From that day on, brothers and sisters, all her pain went away. From that day on, brothers and sisters, for the glory of the Lord, never again did our sister experience any ailment. And today she's completely healed. Blessed is the name of the Lord. How great is the name of God, brothers and sisters. How precious is the name of our Lord. For that reason, today today we're enjoying a teaching. Tomorrow we'll also have a beautiful teaching every single day through our YouTube channel, through our website. You can enjoy teachings, sermons, testimonies, or Bible study every day. That's why we invite you all to always click like on the videos at the same time that you subscribe to your YouTube channel and that we all may pay attention to all notifications, that you enable all notifications so that we're always getting ready, being nurtured, being nourished by this wonderful blessing God gives us. May the glory be to the Lord. Let us rise, brothers and sisters. I invite you all so that with greater joy, with greater happiness, now let us pray and thank God. Brothers and sisters, when God blesses our lives, our heart wants to thank God. How many of you wants to thank God today? I know you do. Glory to the Lord, because God has blessed us. Remember the blessing you just received. Remember the benefits that you've received throughout the many days of your life. Thank God. Let us thank God for all of it. Father of heaven, heavenly Father, Lord of endless greatness, God of eternal kindness, with all our heart, with all the fervor of our soul, with a great deal of joy, O Heavenly Father, to you, O mighty, awesome one, to you, God of glory, to you, King of kings, Lord of lords, our God who has always given us victory, we want to thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your blessed word, for your living word. Thank you for your gospel. Thank you for your church. Thank you for your apostle, our spiritual, worldwide spiritual leader, our beloved Sister Mary Luisa. Thank you, Lord, for the teachings, for the words of life you give us, for being able to understand as we read the Bible. Thank you for your experiences you give us, for your daily company 
Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for our marriages, for our children, for our jobs, for our well-being and the quality you give us every day of our lives, God of heaven. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being our Father. Thank you because you are the one who encourages us. You are the one who strengthens us. You are the one who makes us happy every single day of our lives, God of heaven. Thank you for being with us. We feel your presence at this time, Lord. We feel your blessing at this moment. Every day you bless us, God, good Father. Thank you, O oh, Heavenly Father, with all our affection and love, your entire church gathered tells you our profound gratitude and all of it, God of glory, we say to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the honor and glory be always to our Savior. And so as we are filled with happiness, filled with joy, how many of you are joyful today, brothers and sisters tonight? How many of you feel ha feels happiness in, from God Yes, we are joyful, we are happy, and we are glad because we are praising God. As this chorus states, 143, hallelujah, we now praise you. Let us sing to God, brothers and sisters, as the Bible states, sing to the Lord joyfully, all the earth, as the psalm states, let us sing to the Lord. God deserves the praise and all glory, honor to the Lord. Let us also sing him or chorus rather, 154, titled, Lord, send me out to preach. Let us sing with all our joy. Send me 
God of heaven. Blessed you are. How great and how wonderful is the name of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, where are those who want to serve the Lord? Where are those who want to be sent by our God? What better way, brothers and sisters, to serve God but to prepare ourselves and enjoy a wonderful, precious sermon. And it makes me very happy to leave you in the company of our worldwide head pastor, our brother Carlos Alberto Baena Lopez. God bless you all greatly, brothers and sisters. Good evening. God bless you all. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Great is our God. Great jubilation and happiness in our hearts. A lot of love for the Lord and a great deal of trust in Him. Our prayers, our reading of the Bible, and our praises. Isn't this right? Of course, I know. I think we're all doing this and the Lord is very happy with the purpose we have in our hearts. You may take your sheets. Cordial greeting also to all people who are joining our these live streams. Those of you who are new to church, we feel really, we're really happy to spend time with you and know that it's all a promise of the Holy Spirit, that this is not happening by chance, you being here, joining these live streams, because it is the will of the Lord. And the will of God goes to such strength that there was a person a few days ago who lost his job, and this person was so desperate that... He started to think about taking his own life. And in that plotting and thoughts that came to him, he went to, on the internet to look for ways, pardon me for this harsh testimony, but he went for, to look for ways to do it. And the, the, what came up on the internet was the live stream of our church. And God had this endless kindness to move his heart for him to join the live stream and watch the whole sermon from our sister Mary Luisa. So at the tail end, he felt that there was a different thought in him and that something had happened in his life and that he was now looking at life through different eyes and he let go of that idea of taking his own life. Everything changed because quickly the next day, he received a call from from his job offering him to come back to work. And today he doesn't miss a single live stream. Blessed is the name of the Lord. This is wonderful. God is great. God is wonderful. And God is good. God is powerful. And also there was a sister of the church who has been attending church for, for a while now. Her family member got sick and she her health deteriorated gravely. She was taken to the hospital and she didn't know what was happening. She was just praying. But God comforted her. And at night she had a dream where she saw her sister coming home saying, don't worry. Her family was a sister, her sister. She said, don't worry for me because I'm, I'm okay. So she woke up really happy with that dream. And she already knew that it was a dream that was God given by the Holy Spirit given. And... Indeed, after she woke up, two hours later, she received a phone call from the hospital confirming that her sister was doing well and she could go pick her up. In the dream also, she saw her sister who was dressed with a certain kind of collar. Uh, and when she woke, got there, she was very happy. And so she said, uh, please give me cream or petroleum jelly. I don't know if you know it, but it's a type of cream that lubricates the mouth. You People use it for their mouth. And so when she went to pick her, her sister up at the hospital, the same thing happened. The same clothes, the same dress her sister had on, and the same thing with the uh, with the jelly. Do you have a little bit of petroleum jelly, or Vaseline? So this is all like fantasy, really. Hallelujah! Great is the Lord. Glory to the Most High. We don't have enough words. Truly, we're speechless to pay homage to the greatness and magnificence and greatness and mercy of our good Lord. For God. In this day and age, to deem us worthy, to give us these experiences that are written in the Bible with dreams, with visions, with a gift of prophecy, 
It is the great gift, the great blessing, and the great blessedness. So let us rise, and we're going to read in our Bibles. Today, we're going to teach about making a commitment to God. That's the title of the sermon. And it has as a foundation a recent prophecy wherein the Holy Spirit, through our sister Mary Louisa, said, I am looking and seeing that many are making a commitment to me. So we're going to see what is that about. What the Holy Spirit said, I see that many are making a commitment to me. How beautiful. Glory to God. I think that we're all making a commitment to God. But we're going to see an example of that commitment to God and that decision, that determination during the lifetime uh, in the Old Testament, during the lifetime of Ruth. So let us read in... The Old Testament, chapter number one. After the book of Judges, we find this beautiful book. Chapter number one, Ruth number one. We are going to read in verses, verse number 15. Ruth 1, 15. We read to exalt and give glory to the Most High. I hope you all found it. After the book of Judges, you have the book of Ruth. Verse number 15, chapter 1. And she said, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you, or turn, turn back from following after you, for wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God, my God, where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. And look at what verse 18 states, which is the commitment, commit making a commitment to God. That's the feeling we should have towards God. When she saw that she was determined, determined, she says she was determined to go with her. She stopped speaking to her. Amen. Glory to the name of the Lord. You may take your seats. And truly, these words from Ruth are very moving because if she said this to her, to, to her mother-in-law, who was Naomi, Imagine then the way we should express ourselves to our Lord, to our Maker, to the living God. If she said in this context, Ruth said to Naomi because she had lost her husband and Orpha had also lost her husband. The two of them had married Naomi's sons. And both of them were widows. And Naomi lost her children and they lost her husbands. And Orpha went back to her dwelling place, to her nation. And in Ruth's case, she was willing to go to Israel with Naomi. And she said, wherever you go, I'm going to go, and your God will be my God, and I am going to be stay with you, and nothing will separate us. That's what today we should all we could also say to the Lord, because Ruth was not did not belong to the people of Israel. She belonged to Moab, and she believed in the God of Israel, and she believed in the God of Naomi, and she was willing to to accompany her and to follow her God. That's why he said, and your God shall be my God. In verse number 16, she believed in that God. And that is the commitment, making making a commitment to God, beginning to believe and having, showing that trust and that confidence that God exists. And that in addition, she was going to go with her uh, uh, till to death. 
Just as we also make a commitment to the Lord to follow him to the last day of our lives. That's why verse 17, she said, where you die, I will die. And there I, will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me because she already believed the Lord. The Lord mean, it refers to God, to God the Father. And so she said, may God, may the Lord do grant me this blessing of following you and praising and blessing the God you praise. And she made that commitment, but it was a commitment with such determination that was very steadfast because in verse 18, she said that she was so determined, she was so resolute that Naomi was no longer able to say anything or refuse her, but she said, all right, that's fine. Most surely this is what will happen with us, that... We're so determined that the Lord will be pleased, very pleased. And also our families, when they see that we're so determined, so, so sure of God's presence in our midst, so grateful, so trusting so much, so confident that our families will see that example in us. And they are also going to feel attracted and they're going to admire that and they're going to feel the desire to see God. Whereas if they see that we're very lukewarm, that we have show no determination, they don't see that we're so confident, but we're doubting, no one will believe. But if you are determined and you're making a commitment to God and you're truly believing God will bless you very much. For example, Ruth blessed her very much. And through Ruth, God blessed Naomi, and from Ruth, that's from her and the union between Ruth and Obed. Jesse came, and from then David, and from there the Lord Jesus Christ. Just imagine the kind of blessing. But the, it's just that the great blessings in life are built like this when you're very resolute and determined. When you're doubting and you're hesitant and sort of yes and sort of no and sort of like the Bible says, neither cold nor hot, when you have no determination, then there's no manifestation from God. But when you are determined and resolute, the Lord is then there blessing you. And the great blessings from God are built like that, and which is the spiritual life. That's where the Lord's blessings begin. And we could say that making a commitment to God has several components. The first component is believing in God, showing determination to, to God, first thing. The second thing is that you want to add yourself, subscribe to the path of God, to that truth. Um, attaching yourself to the church, attaching yourself to that teaching, to the doctrine. That is the second trait. The third, that because of you doing this, you begin, God begins to do things in our lives and he begins to deliver, it, to li deliver us. Great deliverance comes and great transformation comes and a beautiful spiritual life begins, which God gives us as a reward. It is the first thing. And then and what causes great satisfaction in us because we experience a life change because you made a commitment to God. And the fourth trait is that people... Um, began to focus on their eternal life, began to focus on the spiritual things, on receiving spiritual gifts, and awaiting the salvation of our souls. Glory to God. How beautiful. Those four items. That if someone makes a commitment to God, that's why the Lord said, I see many who are making commi a commitment to me. And so we already know what it is and uh, and what. It, it is comprised of, and the Holy Spirit said, I am seeing, I am hearing, because the Holy Spirit said that there were also people who were mocking him. And so this also happened in, during uh, antiquity, people who were making fun of it. But likewise, today there are people who believe wholeheartedly, and these are the people who are making a commitment to God. And God is very pleased with them. He's very, he's happy with them because he's hearing, seeing them and hearing them. What they see, what they state, what they feel, what they utter. Every time they see a live stream, they receive the messages. And this is something great. It's something spiritual. And also, 
it, great material blessings come from there that are added. But we already know that the first part of it is believing wholeheartedly and believing with your heart and showing determination, show, being resolute, just as Ruth was back then. Because it says that Ruth saw, saw that she was so determined, she said, all right, so that's what it's all about. So among you who are determined to believe in the Lord, I believe that many, the vast majority, let us say 99%, all right, agreed? And there is a 1% that will also show determination for God, just so that it could be 100%, which is what we all long for, that we all are determined to believe in God and, the whole, and believe with our heart, with a fervent heart, with an earnest heart, with a heart that rejoices and admires the power of the Lord. Let us see in the Bible examples. There are different examples. You can also, whenever you're reading the Bible, you can look for examples and you stop and think and say, how beautiful, look at the way this person believed in the Lord. And the Lord always said to them, your faith has saved you because it was the meaning of saying you have believed with your heart so wholeheartedly and you've been saved. It is because he was saved from an illness, for example, or saved from sin, so the person received forgiveness, or also tied to eternal life, salvation itself. And the Lord Jesus Christ always praised the faith of the person believing and the person being determined. So let us read in Matthew chapter 8, the experience that the centurion lived. He was a Roman, he was not a Jew, and... He was a soldier who had that rank, that category, Matthew 8, and a person had gotten sick, someone who worked with him, and he cared for this person, the centurion cared for this person, but he saw that the only way was to go to the Lord, and he believed in the Lord, and he asked the Lord to heal that person and the Lord said that he could go and pray for that person directly, whoever the person was sick. And the centurion said, No, Lord, there's no need for you to do that. It is enough with you saying that he will be healed, and with you, you speaking, it'll all happen. Just like today, also, that since we cannot congregate and we can't come to like sanctuary, we're congregating virtually. So we believed, we fully believed that God is going to carry out healings uh, just with the word alone from the pro general prophecies by our sister Maria Luisa with a sermon itself or the words themselves or the desire of our sister when she says, may God bless you, may God help you. May God have mercy on you. Just those words alone are enough for us to be blessed. This is the same thing that happened to three people who could not have children. They could not become pregnant. The first one, she, Sister Mary Luisa, sent word to her saying, look at the live stream and God is going to bless you there during the prayer so you can have your baby. And sure enough, this woman became pregnant. Then, the, the person who became pregnant told another, l l watch the live stream, because that's what Sister Mary Louisa said to me. And then this person could not become pregnant either, watch the live stream, and she became pregnant. And at the same time, she said that the same thing to another who was not able to become pregnant either, to watch the live stream, and she's also become pregnant. What do you think about that? These are like a fantasy. It truly is something very precious. It's like living something that is not real, but it is absolutely true because these are the same foundations. And it is because people believed and they, they make an effort and they, they do their part and say, I believe, I believe, yes, that by watching a video, by watching a live stream, by paying close attention to the prayer the whole time, opening my heart, I believe God is there with I believe with me and, and with them that God performs miracles through this live stream and God rewards that just as he rewarded the centurion who said it is enough suffice it with you 
saying the word doesn't have to go in person. You don't have to go lay hands. Nothing, nothing at all. Just that. At long distance. Um, remotely, we could say. Far away. Just a word. That's it. Because God has no limits. That's how we ought to think. That is to show determination, to be determined. And that's making a commitment with God, to have that belief, that certainty, that, that confidence. That's the, the starting point for everything. And it is what I invite you all to put into practice. And so, sure enough, the in verse number seven, the, well, in six, the centurion said, Lord, my servant is laying at a home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him in seven, I will come and heal him. And in verse eight, he answered, I'm not, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. And, and then he said, then he said, but only speak a word and that's it. That'll suffice. In verse eight. And then the Lord in 10, he said, marveled to all those who were there. He also told them, assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great, not even in Israel. Imagine how beautiful that is. That is, that is what the Lord is pleased by. And that is what we ought to do. And that's what it means to commit, make a commitment to God, believing with such determination and, so, and being so resolute, just as in the Old Testament, Ruth was determined. In verse 13, that says that Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, that's why, because I've seen your so much faith in you, same thing as you believed, that I am God, that I am the Son of God, that I am the Lord. So, as you have believed, so let it be done for you, and his servant was healed that same hour. Glory to the name of the Lord. Let us also watch another example in Mark 7. In the gospel, the next gospel, Mark chapter number 7, verse number 24 states, and following, that here was a woman who came up to the Lord, and this woman was from Tyre and Sidon. She did not belong to the people of Israel. And as she went, he entered at a house, he wanted no one to know it. And in verse number, pardon me, this woman was a Greek and Syrophoenician, as the Bible states in verse number 26. And this woman was asking the Lord to heal her daughter because she had an evil spirit in her body. But she was not an Israelite. So the Lord said to her, Woman, I was sent to preach to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. Let me first feed them because that was the commandment the Heavenly Father gave me that I had to com comply, observe the law, fulfill it, remove it and, and teach the gospel. And first preached to them. And then another stage would come, which was when the church came together with the Gentiles. And so I am going to take care of the Jews first and then later on the other nations. And so let the children eat the bread I am giving them. And this is what the Lord told her, verse 27. Let the children be filled first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Sort of an expression that they used to use back then. But this woman was so determined and so resolute and she believed to such things, which is what we ought to do also when we pray, that she said to the Lord, Lord, but even the little dogs eat the crumbs that the children throw from the table. That's a bit of very beautiful answer. It's, it's a wonderful thing. So that's how we ought to pray to the Lord for us to convince him and touch his heart concerning the problems we may be having, our needs. For example, there was a, a few days ago. Well, before we go, we go into that. Verse 28 says, And she answered and said to him, Yes, Lord. 
with all due respect and with all subjection to God and all submission and reverence, yet even the little dogs, those of us who don't belong to the people of Israel, under the table eat from the children's trump, crumbs, meaning from the Israelites. That's very beautiful. And so then he said to her, For this saying, go your way, said the Lord. The demon has gone out of your daughter. So the Lord rewarded her belief. A few days ago, a, a woman... A sister of the church was very worried because her son, her young son, was sick. And, or, her, or it was a young man, rather, who began to show uh, symptoms of today's illness. And she said, no, I have to go to the hospital with him. I'm going to pray to the Lord. I'm going to go to the hospital, which is correct. And she took her car and she got into her car and she said that she drove at night because she lived in a countryside but she owned a vehicle and suddenly the her car she said broke down and so she got stuck in the middle of her highway of the highway with her son who was sick and with that situation the fact that the car had broke down and she said that for 30 minutes she tried to solve the problem and she wasn't able to do it and the car would not turn on. But she was so determined and she believed so much that what did she do? She got off the car and she nailed down right, on, right next to the highway. So let us remember the sermon we gave a few days ago, which was when difficult things happen. Then when you kneel down, that's when you kneel down. In one way or another, you look for a way to touch God's heart and convince him, just as this woman did, who was Syrophoenician, who was Greek. She answered the Lord in such a way that she touched the Lord's heart and the Lord heard her. She, she compelled him to her, hear her. And in this case... Our sister said that she nailed down and prayed to God to such strength to, for him to solve this problem so that she could reach the hospital with, with her son so that they, she could be tested and verify what was happening. That she said that afterward, after she prayed, after she kneeled down, nailed down, and she did it with so much determination, she attempted to turn the car to see what would happen with the car and the car worked glory to the name of the lord and then after that she went there she arrived in the hospital they they did all the tests everything that was necessary and it was confirmed that no the child did not have any kind or her son didn't have any kind of okay illness glory to the name of the lord so there's a lot of determination we should show and always turn to god first we should also try to solve our problems whenever we see that we can't then immediately even before you begin to solve your own problems out of your own of your own volition, do it out of, even if it's in your mind. Hey, Lord, help me, help me, give me a way out. Even if you have to do it mentally, Lord, help me solve this problem. And after that, if we see that it can't be solved, then we kneel down or we try to see what we say to the Lord. We're using the Bible, quoting the Bible or a situation, Lord. You have promised me that you're going to bless me, that you're going to bless my family, my children, and whatever it is. And always try to look for an argument for the Lord to hear us. Glory to our God. And also, we are going to read another example. This we find in Matthew chapter number 9. Let us read Matthew chapter number 9 to see the way the Bible teaches us about it says in Matthew 9 verse number 20 and suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years she had an illness for 12 years here we have heard also testimonies in the church of healings people who have had conditions for 20 30 years God has performed these miracles and touched the hem of his garment. She came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. M made well from that illness. Or heal. But Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith 
has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. There's another passage in the Gospels that says that the Lord says, Who touched me? My hem, who touched my garment? And the woman felt marveled and astonished to, to know the Lord Jesus realized this had happened in the midst of the multitude he was in. And she said to him, Lord, what happens is I have a condition for many years I've had it. And I said to my, myself, I know that if I come to you and even if I touch a little bit of your garment, that shall be enough for, for me to be healed. That's to believe. That's to be determined and resolute. There is a passage of the Bible that says that a paralyzed person who didn't have a way to bring this person close to the Lord Jesus. So what they did is they came up with a way to present this person before the Lord. And they did it through the roof of the house. They opened a hole in the, on the roof and they lowered him down that hole. So you say this person. This people surely, were surely determined to receive a blessing. So he said, we have to read the Bible, then we'll read it. If we have to pray, we'll pray. If Whatever it is, if we have to look for the spiritual gifts, we'll, we'll seek them. If we have to strive, forget to change us, then we'll strive. So that's it. It's to show such willpower and so much determination, be so resolute. And in the Bible, you find people like this. And today... In the midst of humanity, there are people like that who are very determined with the Lord, like you all. Glory to God and congratulations. That's very beautiful. That is what we ought to do, to be like this, determined to be resolute with the Lord, to believe in that way. And today, also, the Holy Spirit has said to us, Oh, I'm going to bless you on the internet. And now we know that's the way it is. If our sister Mary Luisa says to us, let us trust in the prayer we're going to do from the pulpit because it is impossible to lay hands on everyone because we now have gatherings, Bible studies with 9,000, 10,000 people at a time. So we're not going to ask for our sister Mary Luisa to lay hands on everyone. Back then, there was also multitudes, but they didn't have multitudes like we have today. And so... Our sister Mary Louisa says to us, the Holy Spirit has said to me that with the prayer alone, that I should just pray and God will bless those who open their hearts, those who believe, those who do something, who trust in the Lord, oftentimes putting your hand on your heart. The woman who wants to have a baby, she also puts her hand on her belly, for example, saying, Lord, give me a baby. Do something. Let's say that the person has problems in any kind of an organ in, her, in his body or body that suffers from headaches. Lord, heal my head, my, my head. Some sort of a gesture or something. All of it. That is something God sees. So the Lord wants to see something in you. That's what it's all about. And 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 perhaps you overlook that and you sometimes don't give much importance to it, but it is very important. It is important. That for example, to read the Bible, make time to do it and pray, make time to pray. And whenever you have a problem, first think about the Lord. Don't think I'm going to see who can help me. No, think about the Lord first who will help you. And then God will place in my heart to see who I can talk to about my problem if I need to, if I need to file a document or submit a, a, a a resume or see whatever but at first i pray and ask god to give me a job all those sort of little things those are expressions or beliefs and that determination of being of having resolution and your the commitment we make to god and that's why i said i see everything and i hear everything because he is seeing our attitude our behavior so let us also read here in matthew 9 Verse number 27. It states, when two people who were blind, two people who didn't see, when Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him crying and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. But of course God will have mercy. If people acknowledge that he is God, if someone says, Lord, I know you are here, and we have heard beautiful testimonies. We know that you manifest yourself. We know that you're here with us. Lord, 
have mercy, Lord, whatever it is, heal me, give me a job, bless my marriage, Lord, bless my children, bless the church, whatever it may be, wherever we're asking for, provide for our brothers and sisters, for the people who need your help. If we do this with this determination, God, with that acknowledgement that God exists, then that is something that God rewards. But not only that God exists, but as in this case, that God is capable of doing anything, the impossible, that there's nothing impossible for God, that you are convinced that with the Lord, with the prayer, and with his power, anything in life, no matter how hard it might be, will happen in us. That's why... It states in verse number 27 that they asked him, asked the Lord for mercy and told him that he is the son of David because they acknowledge him as God. And in verse 28, it states, and when he had come into the house, the blind man came to him and Jesus said to them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? You see that the Lord, this is important for you to believe that God is the God of impossibles, that God is the uh, omnipotent God, the almighty God. It is important for you not to doubt of God's power, for you not to limit God, that you are convinced that God can do it all, can move a mountain from one place to another, and can take a mountain into the sea, figuratively speaking, whatever it may be, there are no limits with the Lord. And and also, and for also everything to be within God's will. But the Lord asked him, do you believe that I am able to do this? They said, yes, Lord, we believe that you can do anything. You can solve all problems that may arise. And so he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, according to your belief, belief they had at that moment, let it be done, let it be to you. And they were healed. Their eyes were opened. Verse 30. And Jesus sternly warned him, saying, See that no one knows it. At that moment, the Lord wanted, wanted it to be that way. But they depart, when they departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. Today, we must spread the news about him and everywhere. Uh, tell people about the marvels God performs. Send the link to the live stream as these women did. The sisters who, the, the one who was already a long-standing member and the newcomers go watch the live stream god is going to heal you god is there god works miracles there and so they started to watch the live streams and god gave them the blessing to become pregnant but nowadays in that commitment to god they are now moving forward they are, they now uh, were added to the church and have taken that step which is a very important step and so let us read in Acts chapter number 8, there was a person who did not belong to the people of Israel, but this person was so open to believing in the Lord, and he was so determined to please God, which is very beautiful, because this person was a member of Quinn of the Ethiopians and and he was coming from Ethiopia meaning he did not belong to Israel to the people of Israel but God wanted to give him an opportunity to be evangelized by Philip just as today God has given opportunity to you just as he gave a chance to the man who wanted to commit suicide and ended up on the internet and what he searched for and the results were the live stream of the church, God intended to give this man a chance. And we are all taking advantage of this, of this chance. Glory to the Most High. How could we not take advantage of such an opportunity, such a blessing? And we're going to make a commitment to God. Agreed? We're going to believe in the Lord with a great deal of determination. We're going to believe that he exists. We're going to believe that he is powerful to grant our petitions, everything according to his will, according to what he deems, deems best for us. And also, we are going to open our hearts and we're going to believe in his teachings because this man was 
reading Isaiah the prophet, but he did not understand really what Isaiah was talking about because he was reading a passage in Isaiah that says he was led as a sheep to the slaughter in verse number 32. And as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. And this was the behavior and the meekness and humility of the Lord before he departed. So he opened not his mouth and his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And he wanted to know whether the prophet Isaiah had lived this or if this was referring to someone else. And Philip, moved by the Holy Spirit, went out and evangelized them. But the first thing that he came across with was a, a very willing attitude, an open attitude. There was no arrogance, no pride in him to say, no, I already know what this is. I know how it is, how it works. For example, how many people today don't know that the Psalms who's talking is the Lord Jesus, for example? Apparently, it seems as though it was the Psalmist David, but turns out it is the Lord Jesus talking. But someone might say, no, I know a great deal. I've read the Bible many times. I, I, I mean, I've read the Bible seven times already. I went into an institute. I don't accept anyone to tell me anything. Or I went through a t- t- theology course. No, no, you're, if your heart is open, oh, let's look. Oh, how beautiful. Let me look at that. Of course, it makes sense. So that attitude also is something God rewards very much for the person to show humility and meekness to listen and analyze and for every person to then read the Bible and draw their own conclusions, but to show willingness and to display humility and for the person to be poor in spirit, to have a chance to analyze and then believe. And so this man who was reading when Philip came as verse number 28 states, he was returning and sitting in his chariot. He was reading Isaiah the prophet. And the spirit said to Philip, Go near, overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you're reading? Look at the answer he gave him. He said, Yeah, yeah, I understand everything. No. He said, How can I unless someone guides me? Look at that answer. So that person was all was ready for the kingdom of heaven. And he did not belong to the people of Israel, which is what oftentimes the Lord reproached the ancient people of Israel because he said, in antiquity, you believed Solomon, the queen of the south, queen of Saba, believed Solomon, and he wasn't me because the Lord Jesus was superior. He was God. He is God. Superior to Solomon. They believed Solomon. They didn't believe me. People in Nineveh believed Jonah, and the Lord was more than Jonah. And you who have me you don't believe me so that's it that was it so today when people you also tell them the holy spirit speaks the gift of prophecy exists god speaks through dreams through visions people should not shut down from that knowledge but open their hearts and be willing to learn to look at the bible to analyze and then to follow the lord and believe and that reality that's in the bible And the Bible then says in verse 31, How can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him and teach him. But then in verse number 35, it states that Philip taught him the gospel. And in 36, he took initiative. He showed initiative, which is part of the behavior the person takes initiative. He didn't just keep that and said, okay, what else should I do? How, what else should I do to earn God's blessings? What else should I do to please the Lord even more? That's a typical person who's making a commitment to God, who takes initiative and who... And also that's why there's a verse that says, so the last will be first and the first last, because they're coming today. The ones that are coming today will are the last, we could say. But there are people who are last who give themselves to God to such stance who put their heart so much and so much dedication that it's almost as if they were the first ones. And the the last will be first. Almost They end up being coming the first almost because their dedication is so much, so great. Their, their determination is so great. Like roots, 
they have so much, showed so much resolution to receive God's blessings and following the and following God that God rewards them. And when they say, "What else must I do?" because the the person was evangelized and he said. There's water here. Here, look, I'm looking at water. What hinders me from being baptized? Because I'm sure that Philip, within everything that he preached about the gospel, he talked to him about water baptism. And so he didn't wait for Philip to say to him, when are you going to be ba water baptized? Because that was going to take some time. But rather he said, "Here, there's water here. Can I be baptized right away? So that's it. That's how it is. That's the way. It's not... It's not that you have to do this and you're forced. No, no. You yourself give and you strive and you seek God's blessings and you give yourself and you love God. Agreed? And that's to make a commitment to God. And so verse number 36 states, Now as they went down the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, See, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. Because he saw so much determination in him, the only thing you could say to him is, if you believe with all your heart, that's it. That's making a commitment with, to God, believing with all your heart in the gospel and the Lord Jesus Christ, that he exists, that he is truth, that he lives, that it is a reality in the midst of man, that through the gospel we're going to be saved. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he was water baptized. Glory to the name of the Lord. So this is genuinely beautiful and motivating. So let us also read a way, something that pertains to the commitment, which is related to the life change and being delivered. When a person makes a commitment, also the person begins to say right away, All right, what should I do to change? Lord, teach me. Person pays attention to the sermons, pays attention to everything our sister Mary Louisa teaches us. I have that flaw. I have to change. Lord, please remove it. Pride. Lord, remove it. Selfishness. I'm selfish. I'm not thinking about my children. I'm not thinking about my marriage. I'm only thinking about myself. There's selfishness in my life. I'm greedy. I must forsake that. That doesn't look good on me. If I want to please God, God is not going to listen to me. If I want to pray to him, he's not going to listen to me. I have to change. Lord, help me so God can hear me. Tim, remove greed, Lord. Lord, remove selfishness from me. That's what the person does. And that's, that's the attitude. Help me be a responsible father. Help me be a, an honest worker. Everything. One who keeps all my duties. Everything you say to the Lord, all the things, because that person has made a commitment to God and the person himself says, brings that out of his heart and brings that out of himself. And God looks at that effort, which is the one that makes a person convert from to become from what the person used to be to what God wants that person to be. Let us read in Colossians 3, chapter number 1. The Lord told them here that they should do this. That if that if they truly believed in the Lord, as it happened to this Ethiopian who believed, who said right away, I want to be baptized. Then with that determination, the same thing. Also for us to be delivered and be able to grow spiritually towards eternal life. The Bible states if, in verse number 1, Colossians 3, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those raised with, Christ, raised with Christ because you believed in Christ, because you were water baptized, because you followed the gospel. Seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. You're seeking, we could say right away, you are seeking a transformation in this life, which is the spiritual aspect of it, be better, to become perfect. And you're also seeking eternal life. As the Lord was saying to the Apostle Paul, lay hold of eternal life. And so, verse number 5, he said, Therefore put to death your members which are on, earth, on the earth, meaning they had to take it upon themselves to make, to put to death in each person. Each person had to bury fornication. Whoever was fornicating had to 
remove that fornication from his or her life. If they held in uncleanness, same thing. For example, someone who is watching pornography, passion, evil desire, covetousness. With the Lord says that it is all idolatry. Idolatry. Idolatry is not only to worship idols, but also selfishness, being idolater of yourself, for example. And, it, and he also said in verse number eight, but now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. A person who is already starting the path of God, starting to believe that person no longer uses bad, foul language. But if a person that uses a foul language and says, oh, that doesn't look good on me, God is no longer pleased with this, is I'm losing points before the Lord. That's what the person begins to think, someone who made a commitment to God. He immediately wakes up, his conscience lets him know, and he thinks, I can't do this. God is not pleased with this. And also, it states, do not lie to one another. That is also very important, very beautiful. Because there can be no lies, nor can there be deceit in a person. This, this happened to a person also who has started to attend church. And I see that that person is truly making a commitment to God. Because he was having a financial need a few days ago that was really pressing. And by mistake... He, they received a letter at his company, so he opened that letter and there was money in there. And he said that it was an, a big sum of money. And with the need, the huge need he was having during this time we're living to help his family, he, he was tempted with this. No one was going to realize, and he could have taken the money as he said, no, God is seeing me, God is listening, hearing me. That's what also helps you. That guides you very much. That's what the Holy Spirit said. There are many who are making a commitment to me, and I am looking at them, and I am hearing them, what they speak. He sees what we do because he is God, because he is the living God. And we should always, anytime you're making a commitment to God, you should always think about that. That God is seeing you and that God is hearing everything we say. If we say a bad word, if we use foul language. Like in this case, this person was tempted to lie, to steal that money and then come up with whatever lie. But his conscience became active because he made a commitment to God, because he believed, because he wants a, he wants a change of life, because he wants to leave his old man behind. And so he said at that moment, he found out that it was addressed to his boss. And he said, no, I can't steal from my boss. I can't lie. And I, I am going to give this money to, and I'm going to apologize for having it open it by mistake. And so even though I may be going through financial need, I know you'll help me. I'll pray to you. You'll help me. So he went, gave, returned the money and he complied with God. And the person did what, what was right. What ended up happening? A few days after that, he received a bonus from his company. It was a, a, in cash. And that to him was what enabled him to gra take that money for what he needed. And as, the, as if, if we're not enough, a few days after, not, not long after... He was then promoted, and now his salary was increased. So look at this, brothers and sisters. God is truly paying attention to everything we're doing. God is seeing us, and he is listening to us. What do we do? How do we do things? What do we say? What, not, what do we not say? And that is why we must always have such commitment and have so, a fear of God, which is the foundation, truly the foundation for us to move forward toward eternal life. Glory to the name of the Lord. Let us rise. We are going to pray to the Most High to pray to Him so He gives us, so He helps us carry on with all our commitment, with a com full commitment with the Most High because we are very committed. Isn't this right? Glory to God. We have made a commitment to God 
and we feel we are happy to do so. May God help us so that each day we may grow spiritually towards eternal life. Blessed Lord, we love you and bless you. We magnify you. We glorify you. You are wonderful. You are good. You are our life. Our happiness. How beautiful is it to make a, a commitment to you? How could we not do it? If you are nothing but kindness, nothing but mercy, you have granted us everything in life, happiness, joy, fullness, peace, rejoice, this great salvation, the path of eternal life. Lord, we believe in you. We believe in your existence, that you are the living God, the spiritual gifts, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ, the everlasting Father. Thank you, Lord, for the new life, for the transformation of our existence, the glorious power from on high, the heavenly miracles, the, the, the divine liberation, the new life, eternal life, a good testimony in your power, in your commands, in your mandates, in your will, which is perfect, which is good, which is pleasing, which rejoices the soul, which is our delight, which is our happiness, which is our greatest blessing and a word and prize and blessing in our existence. We praise you, God of goodness, and we beg you that at this time you have mercy on all your children who call unto you for their spiritual lives, that you deliver them from witchcraft, from sorcery, from the devil's envy, from any setbacks and perils of death, kidnaps, any evil spirits of, of wickedness, of sickness, spirits of sickness of death, any harm that may, be, may befall us again our, against our vital organs, deliver us, perform miracles, and us performing healings. Blessed God, you are powerful, and we trust in you, and we wait in you, and we need good health to serve you, to follow through this commitment toward till our deaths. May nothing do us part. O oh Lord of glory, but death itself in this betrothal, so that we may begin to walk the path of eternity, even though we are living this glorious heaven. We love you and praise you, and we ask for the church, for our sister Maria Luisa, our worldwide spiritual leader, your full blessing, your protection. Oh, God of glory, your people, blessed God, your manifestation and your support. Thank you, God, for the miracles and the wonders that we hear each day and motivates us and in to give ourselves to you even more and to make a commitment to you with all our hearts in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Great is the Most High. And let us sing chorus number 119. Chorus 119. I believe it is every day with Christ. 119. Glory to God. And this chorus talks about precisely saying that every day with the Lord Jesus, we give ourselves to the Lord even more. Every day we could say, I love you more and more. We make a commitment to God. And it is true. Every day we love him more. And every day we want to be better. And we must be better if we have truly made a commitment. Glory to God. Number 119. We love you, Lord. We praise you and we bless you. Glory to you. Oh, God. Beautiful God. A good God. Oh, glorious God. You are alive. You are everything. Our love. Our fullness. Every day, Lord. We love you more and more. Glory to you. Blessed is your name.
beautiful, what a beautiful chorus. Glory to the name of the Lord. Blessed is our God. How beautiful is it to sing choruses, feeling and understanding what we sing. This is called singing with understanding. Glory to the name of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, may God bless you all and may God grant you the best. And so long. Glory to the name of the Lord.